Hello everyone, this is Amir from Adios Hans Review. This is another episode in uh, my series to look at uh, high resolution download music and uh, examine the spectrum and the contents of them and see if we're getting our uh, money's worth as we uh, purchase these uh, higher priced downloads. In this case, uh, I'm going to cover Jazz at the Pawn Shop, the famous recording. It's uh, produced by the uh, label Naxos, or however they pronounce that, and uh, it's uh, according to them it's a DSD capture um, of the tape, I assume, and uh, it's offered in multiple formats as you see. Uh, I, the one that I have I think is a 256 uh, uh, FS and uh, stereo, I guess they have the multi-channel versions also. Um, when I look at my library, I only have one track, so I assume this was a demo that they had uh, provided for free in the past. I don't have the full album. The full album, as you can see, is quite pricey it's, uh, at uh, 31 euros. So imagine if we convert that to US dollars, uh, it'd be a pretty high price. Uh, I forget what the exchange rate is right now. Anyway, um, I brought this into uh, Adobe Audition, uh, as is my usual practice. Um, unfortunately, uh, Audition is not able to play this track, so we're going to have to only look at the static display here. Um, and uh, as usual, looking at the time domain display, we see that there is some amount of headroom there. I'm not sure I'm a fan of so much clustering that's going on here. But uh, at least there's some headroom there, and they didn't try to maximize the peaks uh, to zero. What's interesting and fairly typical of DST recordings is this graph. So we see the typical exponential drop-off of music, which is natural. And, uh, but then what we see is this massive hump and increase in uh, what is essentially noise. This is uh, characteristics of any DST recording. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, one bit format is is used often, and uh, you can't represent music as one bit. Obviously, um, when you encode in that format, you generate tons and tons of uh, distortion and or noise. And to get around that being horrendous at in audible range, that noise is extracted out of the audible range and pushed into the ultrasonic area. Um, Noise doesn't go away, of course. It's all present here, and if you played this on a system that had uh, this kind of 180 kilohertz bandwidth, it would actually attempt to play nothing but garbage from here on. If we look at the, the scale of how much useful music we have, you know, this is only up to 24, 25 kilohertz of useful music, then 80% of this essentially is, is pure garbage that's handed to us to play. And uh, we can see that very clearly here in the heat map uh, spectrogram, where up to about 20 some kilohertz, we have what looks like natural random fluctuations in music. But then we have this sea of black, meaning there's nothing useful there. And then it jumps into intense random noise. Clearly nothing from here up to here is anything useful. This is an old analog tape recording wouldn't have any frequency response you know above here anyway and uh, so essentially what we have is tons and tons of garbage um, uh, my system that main system uh, my DAC can't play this uh, high sample rate DSD or any DSD until I upgrade the DAC so I played this in Rune and I asked it to uh, down sample this to P uh, PCM at 88 kilohertz which is a nice multiple of this Sound quality subjectively is okay. Uh, it's typical of old recordings. Tape recording sounds just like a tape would. Uh, nothing like high resolution digital, certainly. And uh, so I say this is yet again wasted effort of digitizing content well beyond what we need. And in this case, poor format. I wouldn't want to play these things at minus 55 dB. This is quite loud compared this to the music, except for low bass, this rivals the level of, of uh, uh, the music itself. It's very, very exaggerated. Fortunately, most systems are probably not going to play this, although some, some amplifiers are 
you know, wide bandwidth and go all the way up to a megahertz or so. So they will try to pump this into your speaker, and what the speaker will do with this noise is unknown. It may not play it, or it may cook the tweeter, or the tweeter may intermodulate and generate distortion in the uh, uh, audible band. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, this is not music. We want music. We want to chop this off from here on. And when I played it at 88 kilohertz sampling, I would have 44 kilohertz of uh, bandwidth, which is pretty proper. So indeed, what I heard is more appropriate. So in some sense, if you have this track, you may want to instruct your uh, audio program to actually downsample it and, and play it at this rate so as to not pump all this into your uh, speaker and system uh, on this. So another disappointment, but again, for a free track that I got, I can't complain too much. It is good music, but uh, uh, I can't really recommend going sp spending 31 euros and uh, downloading this track. Okay, that's it, and talk to you later in a future rev review. This is Amir from Audio Science Radio.